What's going on? It's your boy Connor Conflict back again. And in today's video, we're going over my top free agent target for the Miami Dolphins. Now, <clears throat> Dolphins have a lot of cap space, so I think we're going to be very active. So there's going to be multiple top targets that I think we're probably going to end up getting. And that's what I'm going to break down in future videos. I'm going to break down the top offensive targets, defensive targets, and I'm going to do a prediction of it all. But today's video is my number one guy I want the Dolphins to sign. And it wasn't easy. I was going a lot of back and forth. Um, but I will say it's an offensive lineman, which I think all Dolphins fans would want and expect. So I will say my top guy is not my top guy. <laughs> Basically, the Chiefs have made it clear that they want to bring Orlando Brown back. However, if he was... To hit free agency he'd be my number one guy no doubt he's young very very good in pass pro and uh in the run game so i think he'd be the best option period but like i said the chiefs have indicated pretty heavily that they want to bring him back so it's probably going to happen which leads me down to two people trent brown and teron armstead now i went into this process thinking it was going to be trent brown and I started talking myself into it being Teron Armstead. And the conclusion will be broken down at the end of the video. So without further ado, I'm going to start by breaking down Trent Brown. Um, so he only, he, he got hurt this season, uh, which seems to be a, a thread throughout his past couple seasons. But so he's had, overall, he had 282 pass blocking snaps. He allowed 12 pressures uh, and one sack. So... It's not bad. That's a pressure for one pressure for every 42 snaps. So for a Dolphin fan, that would be a, a very nice sight compared to seeing Liam Eikenberg and Austin Jackson and Jesse Davis. However, I do think the scheme should help them out. Um, he, but Trent Brown is also a very, very good player in the run game. Um, the Patriots had 4.6 yards per carry when running behind right tackle. Granted, like I said, he, he missed eight games. So eight of those games are probably, I don't know who filled in for right tackle, I'm thinking it's the uh, slot, Michael, I can't pronounce his last name, but he's a stud. Um, overall, he's a massive guy, he's 6'8", 380, I think, he's like a, a right tackle version of Mekhi Becton. Um, he's very good uh, in both phases of the game in terms of run block and pass block, um, but his main issue and my biggest concern is his ability to stay on the field past three seasons he's played 11 games five games and nine games so he's missing significant time each of the past three seasons the very good thing with him with how our shit's structured since two is a lefty our, our blind side's right tackle and so he would be our, our blind side blocker which is is very nice and the, the crazy thing is it's just because every single quarterback's righty besides Tua, all of the the most expensive player is the left tackle, so we would be able to get kind of a discount for our actual blind side. So it's a little, it's a little nice in that aspect. Um, his main success has come with the Pats run scheme, um, which actually PFF um, broke actually down the percentage of runs which are zone and gap, and he actually ran a decent bit of zone. And funny enough, uh, I didn't even know literally until yesterday when I was doing this research. Uh, Trent Brown played in San Francisco with Shanahan and Mike McDaniel. Like, he played a season on, in that scheme. I had no clue. I, I Honestly, I don't know where I thought he got drafted to, but I had no clue he was he was there, and he was there for a year. So there's familiarity there. They know he can do uh, run the scheme. He, I think, I don't like PFF grades, but it's I'm not going to go back and watch the film. Uh, maybe I should. Maybe I, I, maybe I got to improve that area, but... Uh, I don't like, but his run, his run blocking grade was good. I don't like gr grades, but it's it's a better basis than me just sh not knowing. Um, but he did well in that scheme. Um, and then the last part of the free agency process is the contract, and his projected contract is four years, forty two million. Which to me, when I saw that number, I was like, "Are you fucking kidding?" Like I thought, I thought arms or uh, not arms said, I thought Brown was making that north of fifteen million a year. And maybe he will, but honestly, I, I and it raised my eyebrow. I'm like, I don't know, maybe it's just the website's kind of off. It. Uh, this was the projected contract via Sport Track, by the way. 
Um, but then like you see how they break it down. It's like they're taking the top tackles and like they have other factors that like, so you think top tackles like L Collins for the Cowboys and Braden Smith of the, the Colts, they're making in that 10 mil range. So in my opinion, I would run to the table uh, with that blank check to sign Trent Brown for that mo much money per year. Um, because it gives you more flexibility than, say, signing the next person I'm going to talk about, which is Teron Armstead, which I'm sure you guys all know Teron Armstead, left tackle for the Saints. He is one of the best singular offensive linemen in the league, but similar to Brown, he's also got injuries. Um, so this season, and once again, was missed most of the season with injury, but 248 pass blocking snaps, he allowed 12 pressures. Um, I guess I forgot to break the sacks down. That's on me. I think it was probably one or two if I'm thinking correctly. Um, but he did actually, I, I would look through some articles. He did play through an injury for a little bit prior to being done for the season. So that does affect production. So that could be a reason maybe his numbers aren't as good as they usually are. Uh, and he didn't get into surgery until after the season because he thought maybe he could help them down the stretch, which he wasn't able to. But he got, I think, the surgery about a month ago. So he's still in the rehabbing process, which I don't, I'm not sure how long it will be. I know it's a knee injury. But overall, Armstead, like I said, he's plug and play one of the best offensive linemen in the league. You, you know you'll be sturdy when he's in the lineup. It's just his biggest issue is staying in the lineup. Uh, last three seasons, he started 8, 14, and 15 games. So a little better. Uh, this past season was the eight games one. So... But the thing is, it, it goes beyond three seasons, too. Like, I don't think he's even played a full season before. Like, there's some... He's been in the league for a long time. There's some where he's played, like, 10 games. Like, oh, he... It's a consistent thing where, like, Trent Brown, his past three seasons are worse than Armstead's, but he's played, like, 15, 15, 16 previous to that, where it's not necessarily the same for Armstead. But... Um, he'd be our starting left tackle, which isn't blindside, but he would be a, an incredible addition, uh, veteran leadership. He'd be able to help everyone else out, kind of leave, leave him on an island and worry about the rest. His projected contract via spot track is a whopping four years, 95 mil, which is a 23.9 million a year average. Um, personally, I don't think it'll necessarily be that high, like how I think Trent Brown will be a little higher. I think arm sets will be a little lower due to the injury uh, injury factor. I think it'll probably be closer to like 21 a year, which is like basically top tackle money anyway. But that's a fluff ton of money, <laughs> especially when you compare what, what I just went over between left and right. Like that that's the biggest difference in money. So taking all that in, into play, my decision for the Dolphins' number one target for free agency is going to be Trent Brown. Um, and that's actually who I thought, I, I, I did say that, that's who I thought my number one guy was going to be, but then I started talking myself out of it, but then I fell back to it. Um, he's playing the most imp important position on the line for Tua, which would be his blind side, right tackle. Uh, he's got durability issues, but it's not as, hasn't been as consistent of a problem throughout entire careers as it's been with Armstead. Um, and I mean, he's 6'8", 380. He's been a force in the run game his entire career. Uh, and I'm not I'm not so sure about Armstead. I'm sure he's very good. I don't know if he's that level, though. You also get some uh, familiarity with the McDaniel scheme. He was there for a year, which could affect how it happens. Maybe McDaniel saw him for the year and was like, nah, I'm good. I don't want him. But familiarity and he's not getting... He's getting paid like projectedly, so this is projections, but I'm sure it's not too far off, honestly. He's gonna get basically half of what Armstead's getting. So in my opinion, what you do is you sign Trent Brown for how much you need to sign him for. I'm, I'm gonna project around 12 mil a year. Take a little more than what he's projected. And then you can go out and get another piece on the line. Whereas maybe if you go sign Trent Brown to 21, 23 million dollars a year, you might not be able to afford to go out and get another proven commodity um, on top of the other needs we have to fill throughout free agency. So go out, sign Trent Brown, sign a, a guard center or another tackle, and it will significantly improve the line. Nonetheless, both these guys are great players. I think they'll both be very good 
signings. Um, they both got durability issues, which is a concern, which is why I have a sneaky honorable mention at the end, which is Jacksonville Jaguars left tackle Cam Robinson. Um, he's nowhere near the high caliber player of Trent Brown or Toronto Armstead, but looking at through the numbers, he's a consistent guy and he doesn't miss games the magnitude of these guys. I think he's missed, he had like one season. I don't know what the injury was, but otherwise it's like 16, 16, 15 games played. So he's durable. He's a solid player. He's not great, but he's solid. Um, he, he's getting left tackle money though. So it's probably going to be probably, the projection was more than Trent Brown. So at that point I would go Trent Brown, but I think he's an honorable mention. Um, someone that we can sneakily sign and maybe get the most out of him. So that's it for today's video. Next video is going to be uh, breaking down the top fits for offensive free agents for the Dolphins. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to drop it down below. Like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch y'all.